Good evening, everyone. I'm Rob Desai, and this is the Monday, September 10th, 2018 Tropical Weather Outlook. So first, before we get into the Atlantic Basin, I wanted to talk about Hurricane Olivia here, which is only a few hundred miles away from Hawaii now. And here you can see the satellite radar that it's definitely heading towards the big island of Hawaii and the other major islands. And here is the five-day cone from the National Hurricane Center, and it takes the center right over Oahu, which is the most populated area of Hawaii, as a strong tropical storm. And it could still be at hurricane strength here, so def citizens of Hawaii definitely to prepare for this system. And it's definitely not good news for them, as they just had several inches and feet of rain from Hurricane Lane just a few weeks ago. Now, going on to the Atlantic Basin, here you can see on the infrared imagery that we have not one, not two, but three hurricanes here in Florence, Isaac, and Helene. We also have two areas of disturbed weather to talk about. As you can see here, we have an area of disturbed weather. Where it's a 50% chance of formation in five days up in the northern Atlantic. However, that will not be impacting any land area, so that's not of any concern. And we also have an area of disturbed weather here in Vest 95L which has a 30% chance of formation in the next 20, 48 hours and a 60% chance of formation in the next five days. And that one will be could be impacting land. As you can see, today is September 10th, and this is the day of the official peak of the hurricane season. So it makes sense as to why it is so busy out here. Now we see Invest 95L here. Uh, it's just a big blob of disorganized clouds and thunderstorms at the moment. However, forecasts do th say that it will be increasing in strength soon. It will be getting organized. Here's the official model guidance. So far, there's only three models tracking this right now. However, two of them do take it into landfall in Texas, and one takes it into northern Mexico. So this will be impacting land, and we'll be we'll have to watch it closely. Now, here's Hurricane Helene in the far eastern Atlantic. Right now it has it's category two hurricane. It has winds of 105 miles per hour, and it's moving to the west northwest at 14 miles per hour. However, it will not be any threat to land anytime soon. It will be strengthening to a category three major hurricane by tonight or tomorrow. However, then it will be short uh, weakening very rapidly as it heads to the north and northeast into cooler waters and curves out to sea. Now here's Hurricane Isaac. This is to the west of Helene, and this storm is a category one with winds of 75 miles per hour. We're not looking very organized right now. However, forecasts do expect it to strengthen over the next couple of days. <clears throat> and in the five-day cone, you can see that the Leeward Islands are at risk here in the central Leeward Islands, and it could be impacting them as a hurricane. So interest there need to watch it. And after that, it will be heading into the Caribbean and it should weaken into a tropical storm. And from there on, forecasts are still unclear as that's after five days and model guidance is not as reliable after five days. Now here is the model track guidance for Isaac. You can see that there's general agreement that it will head into somewhere into the Caribbean. However, what happens after that is still unsure. Some models do have it going due, due west still and some models have it curving north here into Haiti and Dominican Republic. So we'll have to watch that as well. However, of course, the big story right now is major category for Hurricane Florence, which you can see here on the infrared satellite. It's moving to the west northwest at 13 miles per hour, and it is forecasted to impact some of the Carolina coast this Thursday. Now you can see the infrared satellite that it has a very well-defined circulation and a well-defined eye. And it has been rapidly strengthened over the last couple of days. Just yesterday, it was only a Category 1 hurricane. And now it's all the way up to Category 4, and it's forecast to continue to strengthen. If we go back to the projected path here from the National Hurricane Center, so the National Hurricane Center has it making landfall somewhere, either in northern South Carolina or in the North Carolina coastline by Thursday as a major hurricane. If you go to the weather discussion here, they for, they say they are forecasted to be 155 mile per hour storm in 24 hours. And in 72 hours, around the time of landfall, 
it will be weakening, but only slightly. It will still be a dangerous category for a hurricane. And then it will be making landfall, and then it will be weakening, of course, as it heads into land. However, what I also wanted to point out here is that it will, this movement will be very slow once it does make landfall, which will be <clears throat> causing very um, a lot of flooding issues. And people in the Carolinas definitely have to watch this storm. And preparations should be going under, starting underway right now. Now, the reason that Florence is strengthening right now is because it's in a favorable environment. As you can see here, there is some shear to the directly to the west of it. However, ahead of that, there is a very favorable environment of wind shear, with wind shear only on five to ten knots in the most of the Western Atlantic Ocean. And that's favorable for hurricanes to strengthen, and so Florence is most certainly going to strengthen and will probably keep at a high level category four or possibly category five hurricane by the time it reaches North Carolina. Here are the water temperatures in the Western Atlantic. And you can definitely see that the waters are quite toasty here with water temperatures mostly in the upper 20s to lower to 30 degrees Celsius off the Carolina coast. And that's equivalent to about 84, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which is definitely ripe for hurricane strengthening. Typically, you need waters of 82 degrees Fahrenheit or more to sustain a hurricane. And these are definitely warm enough. So Florence is not going away anytime soon. And it's definitely going to pose a serious threat to the Carolinas. Here's the model track guidance for Florence as of 18Z today. And most of the models do take it into North Carolina somewhere. Some will have it toward the Outer Banks, and then some have it making landfall closer to the Wilmington area, South Carolina border. And there are some models that have it looping and stalling off the Carolina shore, but there's definitely going to be impacts to land regardless of what path it eventually takes. The intensity guidance is here. Now, the intensity of forecasting as of now is still not very accurate, so to take this with a grain of salt, but most models do have it strengthening, key, strengthening to high category four, possibly category five strength over the next 24 to 48 hours before tapering off as it makes landfall. So this is definitely going to be a historic storm and very catastrophic and deadly for North Carolina and the people there definitely need to be prepared. Here is the European computer model as of 12Z. And if we look, take a look here and put it in the motion, you can see Florence right here in the bottom right corner as, a, as it moves towards the Carolinas. And the European model has it making landfall somewhere around Wilmington, North Carolina. It will be Thursday evening into Friday morning when that happens. It still has it as a strong storm even well inland. And then eventually weakens and stalls out in North Carolina and Virginia. That's going to be dumping a lot of rain as it stalls. And the reason that it will, it's going to be going to North Carolina and then stalling is because there's a ridge of high pressure here over New England and Canada. That's, that is keeping Florence going west. <clears throat> and the ridge is going to strengthen over the next few days. And because of the strong ridge, Florence is not able to go up, curve out to sea like many storms in that area do, because usually there will be a trough to carry it out to sea. However, here there is no trough, and that's why it's going to be making landfall and impacting the U.S. East Coast. If you look at the other main model, the GFS model, which is the American model, um, the GFS has it has, is very strong and strengthening as it continues to approach the Carolina coast. However, then it has it stalling as a deadly dangerous Category 5 hurricane, but it has it stalling just offshore of the Outer Banks, and then it just has it meandering there for several days before it eventually makes landfall at 162 hours, which will be a week from now. However, model guidance, again, is not as accurate further than five days out. So again, there is still some uncertainty, though, in the track model. And the reason the GFS has this is because, and why it's different from the European model, is because at, after day four, the GFS has the ridge weakening. And usually there will be a trough to bring this northward and impact east, the northeast and New England. 
However, there is no trough in sight here. So because there's very weak steering currents flowing, so it's going to meander off the North Carolina coast. And then eventually it will just end up going inland. <clears throat> there is also the FV3 GFS, which is a new version of the GFS that is still in testing. However, it's set to be officially in action starting next year. And this is supposed to be upgraded version of the GFS. So if we see what it says, it has Florence as a Category 3 hurricane moving into Wimble, uh, the Wilmington area, similar to the European model. And then it has Florence basically stalling out just inland, and then eventually it dies out after dumping lots and lots of rain. As you can see at the total accumulated precipitation that for the, out, the eastern parts of North Carolina, there's going to be two feet at least of rain, and possibly more. Quite likely, it will be more than two feet of rain. So this is definitely going to be a very bad situation for areas that will be impacted by Florence. And those who are in the impact area need to be watching this storm closely and should be, should be following any orders that the government issues and that state officials issue for your area. That's all for today.